Good morning, my friends. How's everybody doing today? Are y'all enjoying this glorious weather? Um, it's another chilly morning in the spring here in Alabama. Miss Wainwright's got on my favorite big sweater. Uh, I'm enjoying having sweater mornings and tank top afternoons. What about y'all? That's the way we roll in the South. We can change seasons three times in a day. Um, I've been trying to read um, a book a day for you, my friends, and anyone else who wants to listen to the read alouds. And I've realized we've read a lot of fiction and I read a nonfiction. And I wanted to read a special kind of um, nonfiction that I particularly enjoy. And that that is... Um, a biography okay and biographies are about real people and this biography that I'm gonna read this morning is the story of Ruby Bridges Ruby Bridges was a little girl who grew up in a time in our country um, that was um, just a horrible time I mean I, it was just a very horrible time there was a lot of hatred and prejudice and ignorance and just ugly like it was just a time when you know we've talked about in my classroom you have to guard your heart you have to guard your heart against ugly stuff that gets in our heart and so this was a time when there was a lot of ugly and it's something that miss wainwright a time in our history that i'm so very ashamed of and um i was i mean you know, I was just maybe a baby during this time um, or a small child. And so it just makes me really sad. But I think it's something that we need to celebrate also because of people like this. Ruby Bridges. She was a little girl who had a courage and a bravery um, that doesn't often exist in today's world. And um, so I just love reading her story and I love celebrating her because she's a very special person. So this was written by Robert Coles and it was illustrated by George Ford. Oh, let me show this picture. The story of Ruby Bridges. You know something? I don't know why, but... Lord, I can't even get this book where I want it. I love front porch pictures. What about y'all? Do y'all love front porch pictures? <laughs> I just love that. Mama standing on the porch with a baby on her hip and kids playing in the yard and daddy helping unload some stuff from the truck. Um... I'm going to read this. This is um, on the dedication page. It says, Our Ruby taught us all a lot. She became someone who helped change our country. She was part of history, just like generals and presidents are part of history. They're leaders, and so was Ruby. She led us away from hate, and she led us nearer to knowing each other. The white folks and the black folks. And that was written by Ruby's mother. That's what she said. They probably interviewed her um, for this book. I think that's beautiful. I might cry. I'm already feeling some tears. Ruby Bridges was born in a small cabin near Tylerton, Mississippi. We were very poor. Very, very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. We just barely got by. There were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops, so my daddy lost his job, and that's when we had to move. I remember us leaving. I was four, I think. In 1957, the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's father became a janitor. Her mother took care of the children during the day, after they were tucked in bed, Ruby's mother went to work scrubbing floors in a bank. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. Love the illustrations in this book because they're just so 
genuine and you can just feel the I don't know it's like you can just feel the characters coming off the page at that time black children and white children went to separate schools in New Orleans the black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children it wasn't fair and it was against the nation's laws in 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to two white elementary schools. Three of the girls were sent to McDonough 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade in the William Fronts Elementary School. Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in an important event in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed to God, Ruby's mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble and Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold her head up high and be a credit to her own people and a credit to all the American people. We prayed long and we prayed hard. I love that. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the Franz Elementary School. The people carried signs that said they didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. The city and state police did not help Ruby. The President of the United States ordered federal marshals to walk with Ruby into the school building. The marshals carried guns. Can you even imagine being a tiny little six-year-old first grade girl and grown people acting any such a way, screaming, hollering, just so, so sad, and being walked in by federal policemen to protect you. I think I would have just run back to my mom and said, no, I don't want to go here. That is so sad, guys. So important for us to be, have love in our heart and not that kind of hatred. Every day for weeks, that turned into months, Ruby experienced that same kind of school day. She walked to the front school surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair and carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly for the first few blocks. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the street, men and women and children shouted at her. They pushed toward her. The marshals kept them from Ruby by threatening to arrest them. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say a word. The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone, except for her teacher, Miss Hurley. There were no other children to keep Ruby company, to play with and learn with, to eat lunch with. But every day, Ruby went into her classroom with a big smile on her face and ready to get down to the business of learning. She was polite and she worked well at her desk. Miss Hurley said, she enjoyed her time there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or irritable or scared. She seemed as normal and relaxed as any child I've ever taught. So Ruby began learning how to read and write in an empty school building. I just can't even imagine. God bless her. Sometimes I'd look at her and wonder how she did it. 
said Miss Hurley. How she went by those mobs and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. Miss Hurley would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and confident. But Ruby kept saying she was doing fine. The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful or if she had gradually begin to wear down or even decide that she no longer wanted to go to school. Look at that sweet smile on her face. Then, one morning, something happened. Miss Hurley stood by a window in her classroom, as she usually did, watching Ruby walk toward the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped right in front of the mob of howling and screaming people. She stood there facing all those men and women. She seemed to be talking to them. Miss Hurley saw Ruby's lips moving and wondered what Ruby could be saying. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. The marshals were frightened. They tried to persuade Ruby to move along. They tried to hurry her into the school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking and walked into the school. When she went into the classroom, Miss Hurley asked her what happened. Miss Hurley told Ruby that she had been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated. I didn't stop and talk to them, she said. Ruby, I saw you talking, Miss Hurley said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. I was praying for them. Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer for the people who hated her. This morning, she forgot until she was already in the middle of the angry mob. How amazing is that? She was praying for those people that were being so cruel and hateful. That's amazing, isn't it? That's what made her such a spe one of the things that made her such an incredibly special, unique person. When school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a few blocks and the crowd was behind her, Ruby said the prayer she repeated twice a day before and after school. Please, God, try to forgive those people because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing. So you could forgive them just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. Later that year, this is like the afterward after the little story. Later that year, two white boys joined Ruby at the Franz Elementary School. Their parents were tired of seeing the boys get into mischief around the house when they could have been in school and learning. Hmm. The mob became very angry when the first white boys went back to school, but those boys were soon joined by other children. We've been sitting back and letting our children get cheated out of an education because some people have tried to take the law into their own hands, one parent said. It's time for us to fight for the side of the law and for our children's right to go to a school and get their education. They all did get their education, Ruby and a growing number of boys and girls who went to school with her. By the time Ruby was in the second grade, 
The mobs had given up their struggle to scare Ruby and try and defeat the federal judge's order that New Orleans school be desegregated so that children of all races might be in the same classroom. Year after year, Ruby went to the front school. She graduated from it, then went on to graduate from high school. Ruby Bridges is married to a building contractor and has four sons who attend school within the New Orleans public school system. Now a successful businesswoman, she has created the Ruby Bridges Educational Foundation for the purpose of increasing parental involvement in schools. Is that not awesome, guys? I just love her story. I love stories of strong people who encounter huge obstacles and problems in their lifetime, but they find within them the strength and the courage to face their fears and face their problems and become stronger um, and just more amazing people because of them. I love that. I hope you enjoyed this story today and I hope you'll take the AR test. I hope you're reading some good books at home, guys. I love you all and I hope you have a blessed day.